Today, I will be reviewing a book called The Rider by Tim Crabbe, or Tim Crabbe. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this man's name. He's a Dutch author, and this book was first published in 1978, and it went on to become a bit of a literary cult classic among cyclists. It was translated into English in 2003, and then its popularity, I think, even started soaring even higher. I really like this book. It was a very short read. It is about 148 pages, to be exact. And the cool thing about it is that it's actually written in a, in a style of a novel about a 140 kilometer bike race. So it takes just as long to read this book as it took the author to ride the race that the book is about. Another thing I liked about it is that the way it's written, it's a very, uh, it's a very like short, concise and stripped down prose style. To give you an example, I'm going to read the very first paragraph of this book, which I think will give you a bit of a taste about where the author is coming from and what the book's all about. June 26th, 1977. Hot and overcast. I take my gear out of the car and put my bike together. Tourists and locals are watching from sidewalk cafes. Non-racers. The emptiness of those lives shock me. I did some research and I found out that Tim Crabbe, the guy who wrote this book, didn't start racing his bike until he was 29 years old. And it's a little bit similar to me. I, I started uh, racing when I was 30 years old, so I had felt like I had a lot in common with this author. Before he got into cycling, he was a novelist, so he published two novels in, uh, in Dutch. Uh, and then he was also a chess master, which I think really uh, helps him like talk about the strategy of, of cycling, because road racing is a lot about, uh, it's like chess in a moving up a mountain on a bike. Uh, there's a lot of strategy that's involved in road racing. There's a lot of patterns that develop throughout the race. And so having the mind of, of an expert chess player explain the dynamics of a, a road race, I think it makes this book uh, such a great read. It, it, if I can give you like the theme of this book in a nutshell, I would say that it's an ode to suffering. Now, the plot in essence is just, he gets out of his car, puts his bike together, and then rides a 140-kilometer race up and down through the mountains of southern France. He talks a lot about like the politics of, of who is going to be the one that does all the work on the front of the breakaway, because the people who are behind the rider on the front, they get the advantage of sitting in that person's draft. And in a road race, it's a big advantage. It, it, it equates to almost 30% uh, less effort, right? When you're going down a mountain and you're able to sit behind another rider, you can use only 70% of, of the exertion of the rider on the front, and you just have to kind of sit on his wheel. I really enjoyed that because I'm not, I don't really do road races. I've never ridden up a mountain. I think the tallest hill I've climbed is uh, Brimley Road in, in Toronto, which is like three minutes to the top. Uh, but some of these mountains probably take like 50 minutes to an hour to ride. And for me, uh, I, I sort of just started riding from point A to point B, like as a means of transportation. And then slowly but surely, I, I started adding on extra kilometers onto my rides. And then I found out that, okay, there are bike races in Toronto. And then eventually just worked up the courage to go in and uh, sign up and give it a shot really without knowing anybody or without having any friends that were involved in the sport I just decided to go out and like let's see how I do let's see how I fare and uh, and that's sort of how I got my start racing and it's very similar to how this author got his start this book was written in 1970 and I don't think it could be replicated in 2018 I don't think someone could write this book simply because the sport of cycling has changed so much over the last 30 years. Namely, I would say the, the advent of uh, a power meter, which is what a lot of high-level road racers use to, to gauge their effort. 
And so much of this book is a psychological battle between the rider and his potential, right? Like, what is it that you're capable of doing? Uh, you know, what are you physically capable of doing versus what have you done in the past and kind of pushing yourself out of that comfort zone in, in a very way where, you know, you're able to achieve like a perceived level of effort that otherwise you never would have been able to do, like digging deep within yourself. Whereas now I, I find that it's become a lot more of a scientific race where riders know in advance what they're capable of because they've done all this test with their power meter that tells them exactly how much force they're exerting at any given moment during the race. And they try to stay within those confines because they know if they try too hard, um, you know, their legs will get flooded with lactic acid and they'll have to slow down. So modern racing has a lot more of that data and that science built into it. And if someone was trying to write this book nowadays, I find that it would be very difficult for them to, to, to do away with all of that uh, modern technology. Another thing I thought that was really interesting about this book is the gearing that the professional riders use. So gearing means like how big of the uh, cassette and, and, and chain rings are on the bike that the chain is connected to. The larger the, uh, the, larger the ring, you know, the harder it is. So this guy is riding uh, the small ring on the front of his bike is a 42 which is the same thing I use to ride cyclocross, not ride up a mountain. For example, nowadays, a lot of people do like a 36 or a 34 so that they can spin their legs a lot faster. And like, I, I can't even imagine trying to ride up a hill with the gearing that this guy used. And it was almost seen as like uh, your, your pride, right? Like you're a big, strong guy if you can ride a hard gear up the hill. But now we know that you know, spinning your legs faster is actually makes you go faster on a bike, believe it or not. And there's not as much fatigue, so you can ride faster and longer uh, by using an easier gearing, which allows you to get up the hills. Uh, so anyways, those are some of the things that I think have changed over the past. I would rate this book five stars. I loved it. You can read it in an afternoon. And like I said, it's like an ode to the suffering that's involved in, in racing. And, you know, you don't have to be a cyclist to get something out of this book. Um, the same way you don't need to be into, like, whale fishing to read Moby Dick. I think there's a lot of lessons in this that are applicable to all people. I bought Tyler Hamilton's book, which is about uh, basically the doping scheme that was involved in the U.S. postal team when Lance Armstrong was winning on his Tour de France's. So it's like a tell-all book about that. So shortly, you can expect my review on it. And then I'm also currently reading uh, Michael Berry's book. And Michael Berry was on the same team. He was on U.S. Postal for a little bit while. He was on Team Sky. And he grew up in Toronto, Ontario. And so I'm reading his book as well. That review is going to be coming shortly. So if you like this, stay tuned for more. Uh, I can't wait to bring you more reviews. And then last but not least, Tim Crabbe, the author of this book, he's on Strava. And so he's like 70 years old. He still rides almost every day. And so I'll link to his uh, Strava profile down below so you can give him a follow if you decide to buy this book. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you soon.